Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again with another video. Look, I've been posting quite a lot of videos about tooth angles and things like that there, and somebody sort of sent me another message that they're a little bit more confused about uh, what a uh, compounded bevel angle is. Well, I'll try to explain that in uh, simple terms. A compounded bevel is when two bevels are found on the same side of a tooth or a blade of some description. So that's, that's what it is. So, okay, the primary bevel, which will be the first bevel, in this case would be the 30 degrees top plate angle. So that's your primary bevel. Your secondary bevel <coughs> is the angle that the grinding wheel comes in, which is 60 degrees. When we put a 10 degrees downward tilt, it changes the geometry slightly. And this is set at 25 degrees. It's a full chisel, so it's set at 25 degrees. When we put a 10 degrees downward tilt on, it actually reduces the 25 degrees by two and a half degrees. So what it actually does when you tilt, the point of the tooth moves slightly away from the wheel, whereas the back of the tooth moves more towards the wheel. So in turn, what that means is that the grinding wheel will start to grind a slightly different angle. And hopefully we can replicate that and show you so you've got a much better understanding. So when I bring this down, as you can see, that the profile of the tooth snugs around pretty, pretty good. But this particular tooth here will show you that when we tip it 10 degrees uh, in the right direction, that uh, you'll see the difference. Now, there's two directions. You've got a tilt in this direction, which is for the left-handed tooth, and a tilt in the right direction, which is for uh, this uh, uh, tooth. Now, people get confused because they move the knob that's underneath, but the actual vice is the thing that you take notice of. And in this case here, this is a right-handed tooth, and it tilts towards you. The vice tilts toward you, but when you push the knob, uh, you push the knob away from you. And that's where that little phrase comes from right away. So this is a tilting vice, not to be confused with a sliding vice. So now that it's tilted and we bring the wheel down, we'll just go backwards and forwards and you'll see the way that the tooth... So if you look at that, and when we tilt it forward, can you see that the front of the tooth sort of digs in a bit more, but the back of the tooth uh, is a little bit uh, different? Now, let's just have a look at this tooth because this tooth here is a standard 25 degree uh, without any uh, tilt on it. The next tooth actually has tilt. So I wanted to sort of put both teeth in so that maybe that you could see that. So this is the one that was ground with this wheel with the 25 degrees tilt. So if we bring it back down... You can see, and I'm pretty sure you can see that. Now we'll just put this on back on 25 degrees. That if you actually have a look at the front of the tooth, and as I push it down, you'll get a better picture of what's going on. Can you see the way that that front digs in and the back lifts up? I'm wondering if I can get a slightly better angle whether I can. So that's zero degrees now and we tilt forwards. Can you see, and you should be able to see that because I can see it, there's a little tiny gap under here. And that's on zero degrees, right? So that's sitting horizontal. When I tilt 10 degrees, can you see now that that gap is reduced? And the back of the tooth is up higher on the grinding wheel. 
So when we pull it down, the back of the tooth comes, drops down. So the front of the tooth goes down and the back of the tooth goes up. I think you can see that quite easily. And that reduces the hook. So that's what that does. That actually reduces the hook. And on the first tooth, this is just a brand new piece of chain. That's fairly typical of uh, even Stills X cut. You can see that 60 degree angle, very aggressive, this little point here, then you've got a different angle down here. So we've ground that standard, that's ground, that tooth there is ground at 25 degrees with zero tilt. The next tooth is 25 degrees with 10 degrees downward tilt. And you can see that the hook, there's less hook. And the whole idea of having less hook is to provide a stronger point. That is a very good ground tooth, that. So we did it there, and then in yellow paint I did it again. So, yeah, we'll just go over that again. That is a brand new chain. That's a standard profile. Very, very similar. A little... That point on there could bend in really hard timber, whereas this type of grind here, that's a standard grind, but the next one, the next grind, is your... The hook has been not removed, but it's not as aggressive, the hook. And as I said, the top plate, so... If we were to look at this particular tooth here, you'll find out that that is 22.5 degrees. We've lost two and a half degrees on the angle, whereas this one here is at zero degrees and doesn't have any 10 degrees downward tilt. So this is 25 degrees. The moment we engage 10 degrees downward tilt, we lose two and a half degrees. So what you can do is that you could put that at 27 and a half degrees and you'll end up with 25. Now, where does the 10 degree tilt, why is it so important? Or is it really that important? It's not as important as what you might think. You can certainly uh, live without it. It's, it's not a major game changer. The full chisel chain is a much more aggressive chain and the full chisel chain will cut much faster than a semi chisel chain but because of that sharp point this sharp point here the sharper you have this point the much more easy it is to blunt so if we go back to the standard if we go back to this standard point here without any tilt you can see that it's, that it's very pointy and if you had 35 degrees, it's even more pointy. So this is 25 degrees. So the point would even be much more pointy. Uh, it's like you look at this pointer. Very, very pointy. So it's very easy to blunten. Whereas the semi-chisel has a much more rounded radius on the edge. So it's much more forgiving. So this is ideal in soft to medium type timber. Uh, between say 10 and 15 percent uh, more cutting uh, you'll get through there much quicker but it will blunt quicker so the best way in medium timber my recommendation is that you just have 25 degrees which is this one here so that's 25 degrees there we'll just turn that back around I've only got there so that you can see it so 25 degrees top plate angle here and 10 degrees downward tilt which will remove the hook and yeah, it gives a compound it's a compounded beveled angle simple as that and just another thing for those people that don't know your top plate your side plate is chrome plated so that extends the life of the sharpness of the tooth without the chrome plate it would dull even quicker so just to briefly uh go over recap again before we go 
a full chisel tooth uh, is normally around 25 degrees your semi chisel tooth is normally around about 30 degrees when you put a 10 degree downward tilt on it it changes the geometry uh, it's more suitable it removes the hook or part of the hook the hook isn't as aggressive so that this tip the metal it's underneath it's got more support so this compounded bevel with the two angles on it is slightly different than the standard uh, one as I showed you before and there's much less hook so it's much more forgiving and will last a little bit longer so it's up to you whether you want to put a 10 degrees downward tilt on or not if I had two identical chainsaws beside me and one had 10 degrees downward tilt and one didn't, I think I might be struggling telling you which one worked better. But there may be another situation in which I might say, yes, that's definitely 10 degrees downward tilt. And the only situation that I can really think of is if you're in really soft timber. And then, you know, it'll just cut through a knife like a butter. Anyway, I hope that uh, explains uh, the 10 degrees downward tilt and the so-called compounded bevel, which a lot of people use that terminology now. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.